Good afternoon and welcome once again to my daily chat. Before I jump into who I am and everything else, I introduce this is chapter this is chapter this is episode four hundred and eighty. Yes, four hundred and eighty. Closing down on closing in on four five hundred. That's coming soon. And the topic today has been it's been on my mind. Yesterday's was, so is today's, and I get to that I remind you yes yesterday's in a moment. But today's topic is um women destroying women. Stop that shit and being blunt. Um, after yesterday, I think I opened up, I, uh, I let, let a cat out of the bag, so to speak, about my views, and I thought, well, I'm going to keep going. So, first of all, welcome to my broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is what inspires this. And every day, because of that, I do these daily talks called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's topic. I have to talk about it. Um, I, I saw a post from a friend of mine who went through a um, challenge at the airport with um, air, what do you call those people? <laughs> the desk clerks at the window uh, uh, checking her in and they just were so uh, blank and unaware of her challenges. I was like, I've got to speak to this. This is bugging me. Because after yesterday, I did the whole thing about Me Too rising and how it's about time and what's coming up from that. This is part of that in a way. This is, a, this is like part two in a way. So if you didn't watch yesterday's broadcast, number 479, I do invite you to go back and watch that. It's on my wall on Facebook, or if you're watching this on YouTube, it's yesterday's broadcast in the same uh, playlist. I'll get to those links later on. But I'll jump in right now with the topic. So, women destroying women. It's happening too damn much. You know, this this expression, this this um, this release of all the stuff that's coming up because of Me Too. It started happening very recently in a very big way, much more than it did when it first came out five years ago. Yes, Me Too started five years ago. Um, has really changed the landscape, except where it hasn't. And what I'm aware of is there are so many women, friends of mine, and clients, and women I care about, who have posted their own. Um, it's not a come to Jesus moment, but it's certainly a a public um, expression of what they're going through, what they've been through, and in somewhat in agreement to Professor. Um, is it Banks, is that name? I, remember the, I just remember the blank on the name of the woman who's going to be testifying on Thursday because of the uh, Kavanaugh hearings. And now this other woman who spoke up as well. The thing I want to speak about is not about that, but it's about the fact that so many women who have buried and stuffed their memories of the pain and suffering they went through when they were children, abused by a men or adults around them. And in fact, um, frankly, this is something that boys go through as well to a degree, so I'm not just isolating to that. But I want to speak to this thing about women... So I just had a thought that was like, hmm, that might be it. I'll come back to that in a second. So women have been destroying women. In the press, in the media, press and the media, same thing. In, in public, on the air, um, in so many places where women have not been appreciative of the women. Now, I've got some suggestions on this, a couple of things actually, because they keep showing up when I ask the question inside. It's great. It, it's, it's, first of all, I just want to say, I'm really challenged by this, as I said. So... Uh, this behavior betrays the reality that women's empathy being entirely selective. This extends to their empathy to men as well. Of course, as well. Absolutely, McCall. Yeah, you're right on. There's more to it than that, but I want to... Whoops, there's more stuff I was saying. Oh, that was from... Oh, Chris, that was Christine Ford. Thank you. Yes, that was the one. Ford, not Banks. We got that in my head. Anyway, thank you, Lisa. So, two, there were two things that came up, but I guess before I get to that, my... Not a wish, not an invitation. My demand? No, it's not that either. But my um, message, I'll put it that way, is to you ladies watching this and to men who know ladies watching this. There's so much um, vitriol and belittlement happening by men of women. Don't join in. Support each other, please. Ladies, be sisters. I know the men are bad enough and I'm one of the solutions. I believe McCall is another one who's in that, that boat too. We're, we're about supporting women and, and, and standing side by side with them. So number two, you said, McCall, from a resources perspective, women are directly in competition with the women for resources. I was going to get to that. You jumped ahead of me. Damn it, sir. You know better than I do. <laughs> um, but actually, in a way, yes. But is that, it, it, let me just speak to that specifically. Women have been trained in this culture, um, especially around the area of relationships, to compete for men. In a simple terms, women would actually be bitchy and catty to each other because they wanted the man that the other woman was, had or whatever it was, they'd compete for him. The problem with that is that wasn't a woman's idea. That I believe because the competition spirit is a masculine practice. 
So either me women are embodying the masculine in, um, energy because of the work they do and thriving, competing, and succeeding in the business world, where it translates relationships, or men have implanted that idea with women to say that men are rarer, therefore women have to compete for them. You don't have to, ladies. First of all, it's not, it's not about a fight. It's about finding alignment. And you know in my work, I'm about you attracting the right relationship, not fighting for it or beating up other women for it. Let's be clear about that. There's another piece in it I think that's also going on, which is the projection piece. And this one's the, probably the most more likely one. Well, maybe not more likely. It's certainly another option of why women are belittling, competing, and fighting other women around this whole Me Too conversation. This is where it's coming up a lot. Whereas women are denying other women their space to share their um, wounds, their history, their, their suffering, their um, trauma that they want to heal. And I think that 90% of that's happening because the women who are belittling them have their own shame they're not willing to voice. Yes, I'm saying it out loud. I think there are so many more women who are victims or have been victims when they were children of abuse, pain, suffering, wherever that was, that they are afraid to share it so they belittle other women who already are because the fact is they're afraid of doing it. It's all projection. And that's probably the biggest um, unspoken wound that's happening right now. There is so much coming up because of Me Too, and there's another piece of it I'm just realizing, because the Me Too becomes so visible in the media and the hashtag and it's trending, all this stuff, a lot of women and some men as well are almost afraid to share their own story because it's almost like, are you trying to jump in the Me Too movement like Me Too? You know, it's like rather than being honestly sharing their pain, their wounds, their hurt because it's time to share it, they don't want to do so because they're afraid of being like um, going in, they'd be looked upon as being copycat, like the Me Too in negative terms, not the Me Too positive terms. And so I believe for a lot of cases, some of the women who are going through that um, judging of other women, who are frustrating other women, who are denying other women their voice is because they're afraid to voice their own their own wounds themselves and that's a much bigger issue and a much bigger and more serious topic that I'm probably not going to go into a great deal to detail here except to say this there was some, um, I think it was Nikki Haley said this you know the um, Republican um, rep uh, um, head of the head of the department that was in the UN not representative wrong word that word okay Sometimes these words just don't want to stay in my head, they just whoosh, disappear. So, what Nikki Haley said, I believe, was quoting us with, particularly with Dr. Ford, is that she should be given the benefit of the doubt to voice what she went through to, sp to speak from her truth. Ambassador, that's a good word, thank you. I'll call you right on it, I appreciate that. <laughs> and I think it's true that because of what's happening in the Me Too conversation, because there's so much of this um, being expressed all over the world, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Yes, exactly what I was trying to say, but I couldn't get the words out. So thank you for that. <laughs> but I feel there's such a challenge because so many women are coming forward that other women may be feeling like they can't do it too. And they have to suppress the women. And so there's this, this battle I've been noticing. Women who have been, and, and to go back to what I was saying at the beginning, my friend who was at the airport, she was basically, she got, she's got a really, she's a, she, she injured her back, I think it was a bicycle accident, something like that. And she was trying to get a flight change to get into first class because, because she had an upgrade, she had points, she could do it. But the two women behind the counter of the airlines, and this is United Airlines, by the way, in case you want to do a quick, you know, tweet, tweet to them, the two women basically stonewalled her. They didn't want to talk to her. And she explained what she was doing. She's actually on the way to Geneva. She's on the way to Europe to do a TED talk about women supporting women. I mean, it's so apropos. And she asked them nicely at the beginning, like, you know, just that wind injured back. She was, you know, she was basically on a cane, I guess, going up to the counter. And she, she's, not, she's not an old woman. She's very young. But she said to them, I'd love to get an upgrade to first class. I have, I have the points. And they just said they can't do it. They have seats available, but they can't do it. They could do it right there if they wanted to, but they're not going to do it. They totally dissed her and disregarded her. And they wouldn't say why. They simply said, um, we're not going to upgrade you. And we, we have, and she said, do you have seats available? Yes, we have seats available. Then why not? And they wouldn't tell her. Now, it may have been a policy, but they could have said something. Women supporting women would have at least said something to the other one saying, well, we'd love to get you in, but we have these seats blocked out for a company that's buying the tickets or something like that. But to stonewall her, that, I mean, that, that may be a customer service issue regardless of gender, I'm not sure. But it sparked my thoughts about this because I've been seeing posts recently of women who have been, um, um, not curtailing is another word I'm looking for. Damn, these words are disappearing a lot. It'll come back to me. But there are women who basically are cutting off other women, who are not letting women voice their own Me Too upset, hurt, wound, whatever that is. And it's... <laughs> that word showing up again. Um, 
I, I blurted out yesterday. I'm trying. I'm trying to be PG in my in my broadcast because these go on other places on YouTube, and I want to make sure I stay clean. But sometimes it just pushes my buttons. That I want to say, "Damn it, no." Um, <laughs> so I'm dropping. I dropped the F word yesterday. So if you didn't see yesterday's broadcast, I was on a rant, and it got that far into it. Where I just said, "It's effing stupid." Um, actually, I need. I know. I use balanced galactica terms. Fracking stupid. There, I'll use that word much better. Um, <laughs> so in this conversation about women who are not respecting each other. That's fracked, to be blunt. Um, and I expect that I can remember. Yeah, actually, you mentioned at the beginning, so yeah, let me speak to that, because you're right on that point, McCall. Because this female intuition, female empathy, female understanding that women have had, I think to a large degree, because of what's happening with the way women have been trained in this world, has been subjugated, subjugated sublimated, suppressed, one of those words, so that women have forgotten how to use those skills and ladies your gifts your talents when you have your feminine tapped in when you're tapped into your feminine place power authority wisdom insight connection brings about a collaboration inclusiveness i was talking to some i was watching somebody uh yesterday was talking about this a friend of mine doing, was doing a, a broadcast how oh yeah I was, no sorry <laughs> sidebar <laughs> I'm part of a new um, monthly meeting called the Blue Tent, which is a men's meeting. So there's the Red Tent, it's for women, there's a Blue Tent for men. And one of the guys was talking in that group about how, um, the way he remembered from one of his teachers, how the masculine energy is pointed, because we penetrate. We are the ones that seek out to direct. The feminine energy is round because it invites, it includes, and it brings in. The feminine energy includes, it's round, it brings in. When women are not in their feminine, they ain't doing that. They're doing this. So the problem is that women have been adopting and embracing and um, presenting their masculine energy in the world like the men do, which is when women are in the masculine, they don't respect other women. And that's a failing of this culture. Yes, cultural level I'm speaking here, because frankly, there's such a missing piece for women to remember that they are women, feminine women, and the other women are not their enemy, but their sisters. This is a change that I know I'm speaking up a lot about and in my messaging, in my work, and in my writings, so I'm going to keep talking about it because it hasn't changed yet. So I know that there are other men in here like, like McCall and a few other people I know who watch my broadcast who know what I'm about. We speak to this point too, that we stand in agreement, in alignment, in support of women. It, so Donna, hi Donna, I didn't see you in broadcast. Now I see you. It's a mentality that if you succeed, I have failed. So some women sabotage the success of other women, which is a masculine mindset to do it. That's, this is the problem. The masculine is competitive. And when women are in business, they're taking on the masculine mindset to compete which means there's one winner, everybody else loses. The feminine is about win-win, not win-lose. McCord, danger. Feminism has fed women the story that when they want, and what, whoops, um, sorry, feminine has fed women the story that when, that what they want and need is not what they want or need. And since women are not fact or evidence-based, they don't notice the disconnect between what has they've been promised and what happens. You're going deep there, my friend. Absolutely true, yes. Um, that's one of the challenges that when women go to the masculine, they're not really embodying full masculinity because it's a, ma it's a male energetic that it lines up. And so a lot of women lose connection with their ability to function effectively. Ladies, I have to say this again and again and again. Your feminine power, your feminine authority, your feminine gift way outweighs the masculine embodiment you put on in the world. And when you remember, ladies, when you remember to take that feminine energy fully on and embrace it, own it and express it, as sisters, you're going to save our planet. Yes, save. I said the word save. Our planet. Our culture, our society, our planet is being directed by a masculine, excuse me, a um, macho energy, which we would call the, um, what's the other word they're looking for? Because there's, there's a healthy masculine. It's the unhealthy masculine that's basically driving this planet off a cliff, so to speak, metaphorically. That's a bad pun. Planet off a cliff. Yeah. You get my point. It's a feminine energy that's going to be in the inclusive energy I mentioned earlier, that, that circular energy that includes and invites, that's going to bring everybody together, that's going to save this culture and this planet. And it's the toxic, that's the word, toxic masculinity, it's in the way. Yeah, so that's the, that's the, that's the, the diatribe, that's the propaganda. Be successful, buy a house, men will love you then. And, it, and only, only cats and wine live in that future. <laughs> Too true, yes. So ladies, being your feminine is what attracts women, attracts real men, real men masculine men, men who know themselves. When you're in your masculine, you do this with men. Nobody wins. 
I know I did relationships like that myself and I actually became more feminine because of that. That's my journey I went through. So I'm passionate about being in the masculine, but I'm also passionate about women being in the feminine because when you're in your feminine, you are magnificent. When you're in your feminine, you are a leader in a way of collaboration, cooperation, and inclusion, which is what, unfortunately, we men don't do too well in that sense. We're good at leading, but leading solo. And I mentioned yesterday about Alpha, and if you, if you, I did it, I talked about Alpha in the Wolf community that you may not have heard before, so I invite you to watch yesterday's broadcast, because I talked about that at the back end of my broadcast, and how Alpha is not the leader, but the supporter, different energy entirely. And the feminine energy is one about inclusivity and support to help everybody win. And ladies, we need you more than ever. So please, please, when you are um, seeing other women sharing their pain, their wounds, their heart, their vulnerability, their softness, please do yourself, do them a favor and applaud it. Witness it, accept it, appreciate it and love them. When you belittle other women, you're, you're sucking the juice and life force out of them and hurting all of us. Now, we men can do the same thing, by the way. Gentlemen, listen up. What I said about women can help each other, we can do the same thing for other women and for other men. There's a place now we're shifting in with culture with a lot of men where some of the men who haven't done it before are realizing their vulnerability, realizing their wounds, realizing their limitations, realizing their imperfect perfection in the world. But they're not willing to share it because most of us are afraid of other men belittling us. So it works on both sides of the gender. Both men and women are doing this. So I'm saying in this conversation and starting in a, maybe a new paradigm is that we can all honor each other's journeys and respect each other's challenges because we have them, men and women. And ladies, the more you're on your feminine, the more you can help all of us. Yes, I'm being selfish this way by asking this, but the more you own your feminine in the world and honor other women in their feminine, the more that our culture, our world can thrive. Is there anything else? I think that might be in it. That was, phew, that was a, that was a less... Um, swearing this one than yesterday <laughs> that was one of the broadcasts um, this is this is becoming a theme apparently because yesterday was part one this is part two in a different way so I do invite you to watch yesterday's broadcast if you didn't watch that one and also if you have comments questions on either one please put them below um, this is my Facebook live 5 p.m. Pacific time is where I do it every day five days a week sorry seven days a week me, I did. seven days a week it's number 480 if you haven't seen my broadcast before I do this every day I put them on my YouTube channel and on my podcast so I'll let you know where they are um by the way, if you want to see my previous Facebook Lives, they're easy to see on my business page because there's usually just that there. On my business, personal page, I show all sorts of stuff, so they end up being spaced out amongst other, other posts. So my business page, which is Barry Selby, the author. Also on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. All my social media is Barry Selby, by the way, my first and last name. And the channel is, sorry, the playlist is Messages from the Masculine, as is the podcast. Again, Messages from the Masculine on iTunes. Find the podcast, subscribe, download on YouTube, subscribe and watch. Um, McCall. You propose that women spend 100% of their time learning about themselves. Absolutely. I agree with you. So here's the thing. I propose that men spend 100% of the time learning about themselves as well. Because it works on both sides. It was good for the geese, good for the gander. Good for the goose. Excuse me. It's good for the gander, as they say. In this context, we both, men and women, could learn about ourselves and learn about each other. It starts in ourselves every time. So yes, I agree with you, McCall. So with that, I want to thank you for watching. Um, I was tend to keep this fairly short. Yes, you were on the same page, McCall. I haven't seen you for a while. We need to catch up. We've been all, we haven't seen each other for a while now. Um, and Donna, as always, nice to see my broadcast. It's been a long time since I've seen you as well. Nice to see some of my friends in my broadcast. Um, so thanks for being with me as always. Again, 5 p.m. Pacific time, you can join me live. The replays are on my Facebook page and YouTube and podcast. Um, watch the replays. You watch yesterday's broadcast as well, please. Um, that one started this direction. <laughs> we'll see what happens tomorrow. I don't come in scripted. They just come where they come. And uh, with that, I wish you a pleasant evening. It's good to see you as well. Thank you. And uh, please share. Oh, by the way, if this speaks to anybody you know, please share it with them. I, I do share this out to my couple of groups I belong to. But if you feel this should be shared with certain people, feel free to do so. You might want to explain why. <laughs> so with that, thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Same time, same back channel. Take care of yourselves. Bye.